Joining us now to discuss BTC price and more is Clara Medali, Strategic Initiatives and Research Director at crypto data provider Kaiko. Hi, Clara. Thanks for joining us. So taking a look at the Bitcoin market right now, I noticed in your notes you mentioned that the bid ask spreads for BTC ETH have widened in January. What's the significance of that? Yeah, well, I think over the past year, you've seen bid ask spreads actually get a lot better for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. But what I noticed when looking at the spreads this morning is that actually in January, you really see the widening again. And that, of course, has to do with the volatility. Volatility has been very high throughout the month of January. And you see that when looking at the spread, particularly um, Ethereum, spreads for Ethereum, USD trading pairs on the leading fiat exchanges like Coinbase and Bitstamp have really widened quite a lot over the past month. And what's the significance of that in your mind? Is that a bearish signal or? It just means that market makers are a lot more cautious than they were in December and November and earlier in the year. Um, a lot of them are actually removing bids and offers from order books just to account for this increased risk and increased volatility. All right. You have a couple charts, uh, Bitcoin's correlation with bonds and gold. What, what are we seeing here? So I think what's interesting to do is compare this chart with actually Bitcoin's correlation with NASDAQ um, and the S&P 500, which has re uh, reached actually 17 month highs over the past few weeks. Um, you see Bitcoin's correlation with equities spike, particularly when you see a big change in the global macro environment, such as a new COVID variant um, or a new um, monetary policy coming out of the Fed. But what we see here is actually the correlation with gold and the bond index. Yes. Yeah, so here we have this here and we also see gold is that it's actually been negative for actually almost about six months with gold. Um, and that's in sharp contrast to equities markets. And you can see it's really risen a lot over the past two months. Um, I think that's interesting, particularly considering Bitcoin's safe haven narrative. We're seeing it actually behave a lot more like a risk asset compared with a safe haven like gold. And you're seeing that also with its correlation data. That's interesting because in 2018, during the bear market, it was actually not as correlated with tech stocks. Why do you think there is this correlation in this cycle? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I, I think in general correlation data, it can be very difficult to interpret. It bounces up and down. Um, but what's interesting is just how high it is, specifically um, after the recent um, announcements from the Federal Reserve. And I think what we, what we see is when there's a big announcement, when there's a big macro event, that's when the correlation spikes. Um, so in 2018, I think a people were just in general not paying attention closely to cryptocurrencies. The markets really acted in isolation compared with more traditional financial markets. But today you see these markets are a lot more integrated. There's a big overlap now between traders of crypto and traders of equities. Um, and so that's why you see, I think, um, this stronger correlation and stronger reactions in times of macro uncertainty. Interesting. But yet these spot volumes are actually quite low. That's in our next chart that you brought with us. Uh, Bitcoin daily spot volume is actually, um, you know, decreasing, is it not? Yes, it's actually when you're looking at monthly volume in January, it's actually at six month lows. Um, I think that's a natural result of this downward selling pressure. When markets are down, traders tend to wait and and, and see. Um, but what you see actually is you have actually two years, um, 18 months of data since March of 2020. And you can see that volumes are still magnitudes greater. This is spot volume, but it's just over the past few weeks um, as Bitcoin's price has really dipped that you see a reduction in daily trade volume. I think our next chart is the, the monthly spot volume there. So we see it coming down. So, you know, you, you have all these institutional investors, more legacy players coming in, yet the volumes are coming down. So how do you interpret that data? Um, I would say that volumes, I would say institutional investors are probably taking a step back over the past few weeks. You can also see that when looking at structured products like ETFs, looking at the GBTC discount, um, you can see that uh, inflows into these products have been relatively muted compared with what they were in October and November when Bitcoin reached all time highs. And I think the two are now very much linked. You see spot volumes a lot lower, specifically for USD markets. This volume is for Bitcoin dollar markets, which is what institutional investors typically are more um, typically tend to trade more frequently compared with stablecoin markets. Um, and so, yes, you see lower volumes and then lower ETF inflows as well. All right, Clara, so what is your short to, what is your outlook in the next three months compared to, let's say, six? 
Uh, well, I try not to do price analysis too much. It's so difficult to tell. Um, I think what's cool is that while prices have been dipping over the past three months now, we're moving on our third month of losses, we have not seen any reduction in venture capital inflow. Um, specifically when it comes to huge funding rounds, we see a new unicorn every day. Um, so I think for the industry as a whole, these price movements as of yet have not yet um, affected the industry. Um, of course, I think Bitcoin's price movements at the end of the day is going to, like, if it keeps going down, it will sort of maybe dissuade some venture capital investors. You'll see a slightly lower enthusiasm. But for the medium to long term, I don't really see any any um, big setback for the industry as a whole. In terms of Bitcoin's price, um, that's a great question. I would say uh, right now it's holding steady, but uh, We'll see how those ETF inflows look. We'll see if trade volumes increase. I see. I would say if we see an increase on either, we can expect Bitcoin's price to stabilize. You have a price target, Clara? Uh, a price target? I don't have a price target. I, I typically, that's more technical analysis, which is something I don't do.